Welcome back. It's Election Command Center. And we're going to have a conversation about elections and, of course, COVID-19. Knowing very well that the pandemic still exists, uh, we still have people grappling with the situation. The country is not out of the woods yet. In actual fact, we have gotten reports that indicate that six people out of the people who arrived at the airport have tested positive to COVID-19. And so in total, our case count in the country is about 44,730, out of which about 43,000 have recovered clinically. But we also have recorded 280 deaths, and that means that four more deaths have been recorded. Now, we expect that our leaders will be the ones spearheading the campaign against massing up and, of course, uh, gathering at one place or the other. But we're also very much aware that elections is around the corner and there's a need to reach the people and speak to them and encourage them to vote, of course, for one party or the other. In that light, we've seen the president of the country visit the northern region and the upper regions as well. We've seen him go to the Savannah regions. There was a point where he even cut sword, um, you know, for some projects ahead of election 2020. Not too long ago, he was in the Volta region as well. The manifesto launch happened in the central region. We've also had former president John Romani Mahama also visit a number of regions as well. Vice president has visited a few as well. And so the question is that, of course, knowing that these people have so much influence and would have people gathering just to see them and hear from them, is it even wise or is it right that we have them going around campaigning? And could we not have come up with other ways by which we can get the message to the people without necessarily having our presidential candidates tour uh, the country in the various regions. And to help us have this conversation, we have joining us this morning, Dr. Kwame Asa Asante. He's a senior lecturer uh, of political science at the University of Ghana. And also Dr. Ezekiel Norte is a senior lecturer, uh, deputy department actually of statistics and actuarial science, University of Ghana. Good morning and thank you so much for joining us. First of all, I want to find out what you make of the idea to even tour the various regions in the country when we know that COVID-19 still exists? Um, I think, to put it bluntly, mm. the politicians have failed us. Why do you come up with rules regarding a COVID mm. and yet you, you look at the rules and throw them away? If there's no point in making the rules, why do you make them in the first place? Mm. Um, I would have loved to see a situation where that people will go in their own way, that is, I'm talking about political parties, come out with innovative ways of uh, developing means by which you can get your message across to the electorate mm. than the, uh, the recent, uh, you know, position they've taken where they go around and in vehicles and still surrounded by people. The danger is that you are just, uh, you know, subjecting the people to unnecessary health hazards and that. Um, sooner or later, it's going to stay in our face. I believe and I believe strongly that we should be able to what, up the game by developing a lot of means by which campaign can go on without necessarily having face-to-face -face, uh, campaign. But, but what would these means be? Of course, a lot of people say technology, but we all understand that when it comes to the issue of politics, people want to have that direct contact with whoever it is they may want to vote for. They want to see you and hear from you and probably touch you if they may even though the virus still exists? Well, but you, you, you know the dangers involved mm. with COVID-19. So why would you put people at risk mm. by getting close to them, they mass up, trying to mop you and all that? Mm. I, I, I don't think it is right. But it's not any there different are, There are the innovative ways mm -hmm. by which you can get to them. Like. Recently, NDC has been using Facebook put across their messages. Mm. And people have been reading them. You, you understand. Uh, media is doing their, their bit by following them everywhere and then bringing out to the electorate. Mm -hmm. That, I think, is enough. You can also segregate uh, some of the constituencies. You have people around. They can send out the messages mm. on even WhatsApp, Twitter, Facebook and everywhere. Mm -hmm. These are innovative ways. Look, education was badly hit by this COVID-19. What did we see in Ghana? Mm. Every facet of education tried to use a virtual means to teach. Mm -hmm. Currently, my child in class two can do Zooming, mm -hmm. get a Zoom ID, log into it, and then would attend class. Why can't we do same? 
mm. with elections. Why can't we do the same? But you see, the other argument would be that it's happening in the other countries that are even worse hit by the pandemic. They still have their leaders going around speaking to people. And so then what makes us any difference? Looking at the easing of restrictions. Now the airport is open. So it sort of gives the indication that the situation is under control because we don't even have as many active cases anymore. Just a little under 800 or so. I, I, I think that is where they are missing the point. They, they think that oh, the death toll is so low, mm -hmm. about 280 and then we have about 44,000 uh, total cases, but then total currently cases, about 800, but active. About 800 eight yeah. active cases. So they think it's under control. We are not out of the woods yet. Okay. We are not. No, no. And we need to be a bit more careful with the way we do things. Mm, indeed. Doc, you talked about a few other things that we could rely on in terms of getting the message across. Doc Notte says that he's very okay with the fact that, you know, we are relying on technology. But is it really enough knowing that these people want to have that rapport with you and seeing you on TV or on social media may not be enough for them? Yeah, research has shown that that's why the fact that face-to-face -face campaign is the first uh, choice for voters when mm -hmm. they want to meet their uh, leaders and have messages from them. But the second most important medium that you can use is radio. Radio is very effective because it uses local language and all that. Mm. So you can communicate the same message across various radio networks and in the language that where people understand. And that will send your message there. Billboards, the use of billboards is another important aspect mm. of, of this uh, exercise that you can put very simple message on a billboard for people to read. Mm -hmm. uh, Gestures, about 98% of uh, Ghanaians believe in Gesha, all right? Change, let's maintain the status quo and all that. Gesha can send your message across. Of course, we can look at issues like jingles, where people can, you know, you put your message in a very succinct manner, mm -hmm. in a form that they will play on radio, TV, and people will follow, without necessarily subjecting this, uh, sentencing people to uh, this uh, deaf uh, program by what the political parties are doing. Mm -hmm. That is not fair. I have heard that there is a bill currently before the House okay. about um, how they want to deal with those who break the uh, COVID protocols, yeah. the non-custodial sentences. I think it's about time that they hurry up the process and get this thing passed mm. so that people who will be found guilty of, of these offences will be uh, allowed to do some communal services and uh, that will take care of the punishment. That, that means our leaders will also have to be punished. So certainly. We are sending the signals out there. Mm. It is the duty of the state uh, to be up and doing and allow the laws to work. There is no state worth a salt without making sure that the rules that they have set, they will not respect them. Mm. Once you do that, you send us to the state of nature where you and I are not interested in board, uh, getting there. But there was a major concern during the compilation of the voters' register that we were probably going to record a higher number of cases. And unfortunately, that, or fortunately, that didn't happen. And so could that not have been the reason why maybe our leaders think that if we did not record as many cases then, then we can still control the situation if people have their nose masks on and we can still go out there and speak to them? I'm not sure mm. that gives us the license to misbehave. Mm. then, uh, you know, the health authorities have not declared this country free of COVID. So we can lose our guard. We mm. cannot do that. We must continue to follow the protocols and at the same time do what we need to do. Look at how uh, before the registration of voters, some of us were very worried about the disease was going to spread and all that. Mm -hmm. But the electoral commission uh, upped their game and they were able to do this thing satisfactorily. Uh, I believe that that is the way to go. We need to be able to look at all these things and balance it with mm. the proper ways of handling uh, this process so that we don't worsen our health situation. But the Ghana is not ready broken. for that. Uh, the protocols were broken. There were a few people who did not regard the protocols. Yeah, I like that. You are saying few people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Only few people. Only but a large group of people in this country uh, obviously uh, observe the protocols mm. and work perfectly for us. And that is why you and I are talking today. Otherwise, we would have been in the hospital mm. by now. Of course. Dr. Nothi, that means that, of course, looking at the situation with COVID-19, it has revealed the cracks in our society. We've practiced a political system where we probably never thought that never thought we would to have to do virtual uh, you know, means of sending our messages across. 
looking at the situation now, looking at what's happening in the U.S., because they have the mailing system where they are able to mail you your, um, you know, your, your, the, the voter paper, and then you cast your vote and mail it back to them. Did we have enough time to even come up with some of these things? Because this came in March 2020. Yeah. Between March and December, would that have been enough time to develop our system such that we won't have to necessarily physically go to the electoral center? Hmm. That, that's a tough one. Um, because uh, these, these graduations happen slowly. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, I think our system is not yet arrived for mailing. Mm. You know what people will say? Instead of mailing one, they mail about ten. Yeah. And just a, an individual would have to what? Do multiple voting and so on. And so we, our system is not yet foolproof for such innovations mm -hmm. to happen. But at least we, uh, if we can observe these protocols, I think we can still go ahead and do the voting. But all we need to do, all we need to do is to expand the number of uh, electoral police stations, mm. expand them so that not uh, about 100 people should vote in a particular location. If, we, if that can and be that done. that would slow down the process. It, it could slow down the process, mm -hmm. but it means that it will add more cost mm -hmm. because you need all the gadgets in each of the police stations. Yeah. Do we have but, the funds for it? We, Looking at the fact that we've already we've, spent we've so never, much on we, the compilation we've, of the voters' we've, register. We've never had funds for anything. Mm. We always resort to what? Mm. Uh, getting support from our donors. So if, if, if we argue our case out, I'm sure we can get some funding for that. What about relying on early voting? Could that also have been a solution to the problem? Yes, early voting still... Uh, would be in force. Mm -hmm. There are certain people who would be allowed to vote, to vote much earlier. Yeah. People in the media, uh, people in the police force, mm -hmm. and, 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 and the army, they vote much earlier because they would make sure that security is taken care of mm -hmm. on the day of voting. Yeah. And I think once we can decentralize this voting, massing up at centers where our flashpoints will be non-existent. Mm. That's interesting, actually. But do we have a future when it comes to developing our electoral system such that we can still vote even when there's crisis? I think it's not difficult to do. Uh, a very long journey, you start with a step. Mm. Uh, if the country want to address this issue head on, I think they will begin to put measures in place to handle such a situation. It's not difficult. Mm. Uh, the good news is that countries around the world have some of these uh, structures in place that we can learn from mm. the best practices. How long did it take some of these countries to even develop their system? Yes, you don't need the time. All that you need to be able to what, act and act decisively. And uh, the time is now for us to put our acts together and plan ahead. Look at the COVID. But we've been able to, you know, uh, deal with one head already by registering voters. Mm -hmm. So if we apply ourselves to the rules, we should be able to address this situation um, um, head on. But you see, even with that, sorry to catch you, there were people who were stranded outside the country and they were even asking for a way to you know, register online, virtual registration. That didn't happen. We heard from the PR and she said they were discussing it, but it never came uh, to see the light of day. And so what really shows that we're ready to even go to the next level when it comes to this particular issue? It is unfortunate that incident happened. Yeah. But you see, we cannot uh, discount the fact that uh, we've been able to do well in the registration. Mm -hmm. And that going into the election, we should be able to uh, repeat same or do better. I believe, I have a firm belief that uh, we can do better when we, we, we do the right things. Hmm. Um, looking at campaigning, back to campaigning, uh, one thing that we can also do is strengthen our education on uh, yeah, those this protocols. Okay. The NCC must you know, be up and doing and educate people to stay away from people who come around their communities to campaign. Mm. Uh, there's no point going closer to a political candidate only to go home and go and die with COVID. Mm. You know, it's pointless if you want to give your power to somebody. You want to also live and see what the person will do. Uh, and then you'll be satisfied that 
indeed you give your power and you have seen results so i believe education must continue to be strengthened mm. and then so that we can get these things processes right we must also tell them that there are avenues right tv is another medium that they can use use tv and it's the same as you being there the tv will carry the message if you want to see the person you will see the pictures mm. and tv should be applied in this process not only that we must also rely on other uh, you know mediums such as what uh, you know facebook twitter and all that research has shown if you take uh, uh, facebook about 31.3 percent of Ghanaians mm. use facebook yeah. why can't you take advantage of this uh, we can also talk about uh, even twitter about 11.5 percent of Ghanaians uh, get hooked onto this mm. and whatsapp takes about 48.8 percent it tells you that if you are able to plan properly and balance these things right, we will get the result that we want so that at the end of the day, we reduce the incidence of COVID spreading in this country. But, but and the, and these the figures are actually coming from uh, a much earlier research that mm -hmm. we, we conducted. Okay. And currently, I'm sure these are higher than uh, what, what mm. uh, figures he had mentioned. But, I'm sure WhatsApp, we, 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 we will get close to about 60 60 70 percent but what about the people, people who do it? not have access to electricity and so do not have smartphones do not have access to the internet probably don't have a radio in their community because there's no electricity what is today. wrong going to the community you know you can operate within that 200 uh, limit yeah. mm -hmm. and then you know go have a very peaceful conversation uh within a community where you don't bring in more people uh to the scene and all that just use the rules be guided by the rules and develop something out of it. Okay. It can be done. It can be done. You can even pass on the messages to community heads where they have constant touch with the people in the community. But what and if they're affiliated to one party? That means that one party probably benefits from the other. I'm talking about, I mean, community heads, yeah. uh, political leaders. Mm. I'm talking about the okay. political leaders, not the traditional leaders okay. and so forth and so on. So for all political but leaders, regardless yes, yeah. of party. There are people that you can rely on in mm. carrying your message across without necessarily getting a lot of people face to face so that you spread the message. It's just thinking outside the box, I see. and you should be able to deliver the goods. Dr. Nasi, your final words before I wrap up on this. Well, so I think that these political leaders must actually uh, do what they preach. They should actually adhere to all the safety protocols mm. for COVID-19. Because when you get it, you don't know whether you die or you stay alive. Should they put an end to the campaign? Oh, no, you know, that, no, that cannot happen. That, that cannot okay. happen. So but what we are saying that, still talk? yeah, find a way out mm. that should, will not necessarily jeopardize the health conditions of people in this country. Okay. And you yourself, as the political actor looking for vote, you need to survive in order to carry on with your campaign. Absolutely. So it is in their own interest to do the right things Absolutely. so that at the end of the day, everybody will smile. Definitely. Yeah. Because they themselves can, can get... Uh, the coronavirus. The, the, the of course, coronavirus. we have recorded some government exactly. officials who caught the virus as yes. well. But well, thank you so much, Dr. Kwame Asante is a senior lecturer at uh, the Political Science Department, University of Ghana, and also Dr. Ezekiel Norte is also a senior lecturer at the Department of Statistics and Actuarial Science, University of Ghana. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Dela Michelle will be joining us shortly to take a view at your comments on social media as to which manifesto promise is going to compel you to vote for which party. Keep watching.